Ahem. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> I was just, uh, I was playing The Last of Us Part Two. Oh man, it's freaking awesome. Uh, wait, what are we doing? Your predictions video? Oh yeah! <clears throat> Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, Jan Michael here, and welcome to my Oscar hopefuls for June of 2020. A quick recap, this is basically my version of a predictions video, where I talk about things that are probably not only going to be at the Oscars, but things that I'm hopeful will be at the Oscars. I only go over one entry per category, because otherwise I'd be here forever, and I, I really don't want to be right now. Uh, so let's just get things started. I talked last time about how I really want to see David Fincher recognized for his directing, but with that we also have to talk about the film he's directing, Mank, which follows the writer of Citizen Kane, Herman J. Mankiewicz, as he butts heads with Orson Welles over writing credit on Citizen Kane. So yeah, it, it does have that Circle Jerk production all behind it, so... Actually, you know what, I, I'm done with the whole Circle Jerk ding thing. You guys should know what it is by now, and if you haven't, go see my other videos. It does have Circle Jerk production written all over it, but I trust David. He's made some of my favorite films of all time, and I'm really excited to see what he does with this movie. I made the prediction in my last video about how I think Dune is going to come in and sweep up all the technical awards and then lose out on everything else. But one category I would really like to see recognition is for the director Denis Villeneuve, who definitely has a unique directing style. And even if you're not a film connoisseur, there's a good chance that you can pick his movies out of a lineup. His movies have this really cool feel, but also look very gritty and, and realistic, even when the subject material isn't. And he's only been nominated once before for a rival. Academy? The fuck's up with that? Fix it. Fix your shit. You dumb fucks. The acting category isn't actually something that I'm super excited about this year, uh, mostly just because I haven't seen or heard anything that I I'm really anticipating. But with that being said, I've been mostly sticking to surprise picks for this category, and I'm going to keep that going, this time with Bill Murray for On the Rocks. Now, before anything, I love Bill Murray. Just about everything that he comes out in, I really like to see him. But... I don't think he really does any of his roles differently. He's basically the same character almost every single time. And because of that, I really don't see him ever winning this award. Now, he can get nominated, just like for Lost in Translation, but I really, really think that that was his first and last chance to ever win the award. And I know it's hard to hear because he's great and he's, he's iconic, so you want him to win, but I think there's always going to be somebody just better than him every single time. And that's a shame to hear. And, but, but Bill, I mean, I, prove me wrong. I, I want to be wrong about this. Come on, do it for me. So many choices for best actress. Oh, who to pick? Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a surprise pick for this one as well. Elizabeth Moss for The Invisible Man who's totally gonna get Tony Collette this year. And if you're not in the know-how, Tony Collette is when you do a great performance in a horror film, which the Oscars tend to look down on, thus resulting in you getting snubbed. Tony Collette happened with Hereditary, Lupita Nyong'o happened with Us, and now Elizabeth Moss with The Invisible Man. And it's a shame because she's honestly the best thing about the movie. Somebody could argue that maybe it's the only good thing about the movie, but... Yeah. She plays this woman who's been in an abusive relationship for years and because of it has become a nervous wreck. And she does it exceptionally well. And I should know because I've suffered, I've suffered emotional pain like that too. What did you say? Uh, uh, nothing, it was a joke. It was a joke for the skit, I promise. Let's continue the surprises with my supporting pick, Dalroy Lindo. Now, if you've seen my anger rant on The Five Bloods, you know that I really wasn't a fan of the movie. But one thing that I agree with absolutely everybody on was Dalroy Lindo was awesome. He deserves all the praise that he's been getting. And it's one of those performances that was surprising because it came out of nowhere. 
Everybody's eyes were probably on Chadwick Boseman to see what he would do. But then, Delroy comes in and goes, fuck you, look at me. And I love that. I love that so much when you just, you get surprised in a good way. He's definitely getting that supporting actor nod. And while you could argue that it should be more of a leading performance, that Oscar fuckery would no doubt come in and stop him from getting the nomination in that way. And uh, this is a performance that I really would like to see honored. So supporting actor it is, I, I guess. Let's talk about Glenn Close for the Hillbilly Elegy, shall we? Poor Glenn, nominated so many times and is yet to win one. And I think because of that, a lot of people are now saying that it's her time to win. And first and foremost, fuck that, because you know exactly how I feel about it. Uh, second, wasn't it supposed to be her time last time? And then Olivia Coleman came in to swoop up the award? So now is it her time? Look, bottom line is, you give a great performance, you should be getting nominated and then win. And since it is Glenn, she probably is going to give a good performance, so I'm all for it. Let's move on to some rapid fire picks, shall we? And I'm going to start off talking about writing with Aaron Sorkin for The Trial of the Chicago 7. I love Aaron's scripts, and he's not a newcomer to the Oscars either, having previously won for The Social Network. If you've seen that film or Molly's Game, you know his scripts are fast, they're witty, and they pack a punch. So I'm really excited to see what he does with the script in this film. And he's also directing it. So maybe I'm gonna be picking him for next month's director? We'll see. For best original song, I have Billie Eilish for No Time To Die from the film No Time To Die. Yeah, I'm kinda cheating with this one because we have no idea what the other picks are gonna be, but I've been recently listening to the song and I gotta say, it's actually really catchy. I can't wait to see the visuals behind it. So, yeah, it, that, that's pretty much all I got. And if you're angry about that one, you're really not gonna like what I have to say about my next two picks, because I'm basically just swapping my picks from last week. That's right, visual and sound. Visual now going to Tenet and sound now going to Doom. But let's be honest, these two films are probably gonna be the forefront of the technical awards this year. So, I mean, it's gotta be something, right? It's... Wrapping things up, we have animation. Why the hell are we even still doing this one? People like animation. Yeah. Uh... Just pick Soul. No, it doesn't look good. I know it's probably gonna be good, but until I actually go see it and it proves itself, I'm not placing it on the list. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, How Do You Live, the newest Studio Ghibli film which is a uh, slice of life following a young 15-year-old boy as he grows up with his grandfather. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. You're gonna have to pick Soul sometime. Yeah, yeah. Let's just, let's move on to my Academy advice for the month, shall we? My advice for the month is stop making stupid ass rules up. The Academy loves to twist and add new rules onto its never-ending list of rules. But you know what? A lot of them suck. Sure, there are some that, that are necessary, but good God, this last one pushes the, the voting area all the way back to the end of February, with the Oscars now taking place in April. And that means fuck all right now, because there's really nothing coming out in January or February, though I know people are probably gonna start plugging their movies in there, but, but why? I mean, just release them in November and December. That's usually what you do anyway. And I mean, now that we're doing that, does that mean that the new voting period is now going to be from March to February every year? Or are we just going to be shortening up next year? And if so, this year's already short. You know, when you, when you start asking more questions to, to the rules that are supposed to solve things, you know, you, you gotta rethink your strategy there. Oscars, you dumb fucks. And that's all I got for you guys this time. So, you know, uh, do the thing where you... Let me know your wrong picks in the comments below, and uh, you know, don't forget to subscribe, and you know, we'll see you next time or whatever.